Hi there, it's Matt once again from GAK, and today we are having, uh, well, we're testing the probably the most controversial one of them. Uh, I know we did a video on it before, but the Fender Bass 6 is it a bass? Is it a guitar? Which department should I tell my workers to put it in? It's, um, it's a guitar of great debate, but either way, whether you're a bass player or a guitar player, it is an awesome bit of kit. I'm actually, uh, Joe, as I said, did a bass video before, and he was playing some bass licks on it, which was sort of what they originally just in a way designed for Fender you know before they really kind of hit it home with kind of P basses and jazz basses these were sort of out around the same sort of time and they were you know the accompaniment instrument you know when they released the Jazz Masters and Jaguars as the kind of deluxe Fenders at the time these came out at the same sort of time and a lot of the bands you saw surf bands and that were using these um, nowadays I mean it's it's an incredibly versatile bit of kit. You see it a lot on uh, soundtracking, you know, if you're kind of doing some ambient stuff, you get a lot of no notes, you know, if you're doing any sort of shoegaze or ambient stuff, it works really well, which is why I really particularly love it. Um, you'll hear later, we're going to run it through a delay pedal and you kind of, you can just, I don't know, you just play it for days because it's just such a nice uh, instrument, it's got such a nice ring to it. Um, for bass players, obviously works well through a bass amp, through something nice and loud and clean, if you're kind of tracking guitar parts. If you're more of a guitar player and you want to do bass parts, once again, it's a nice addition because you can pretty much double track your guitar lines on, on this because it's going to feel almost the same. And when you put it through loads of drive, which we'll be running through this EVH head later, I mean, it just works with wet metal as well. I mean, you see like the Stephen Carpenter ESPs, eight string baritones, eight strings. I mean, this is kind of one step lower. So if you want really low tones, then this is going to be uh, really the kind of guitar for you. Uh, older body, what they've done is they've kind of gone for the Jaguar style. So two of the Jaguar single coils and then one of the Jazzmaster um, single coils as well. Just uh, these aren't P90s. A lot of people go, oh yeah, they're P90s. No, no they're like a fat wound single coil, so they're done slightly differently. For me, um, as a guy, kind of guy that's got a lot of guitars, this is actually something that would be quite a welcome addition because it's just so different. There's not a lot of companies really producing bass sixes at the moment. Strings are easy to get hold of. A lot of people are like, oh, you can't get the strings, but only ball make a set of bass six strings. Um, and obviously you can if you wanted to, always string it up to baritone tuning as well just a different set of strings so you can get them up to pitch and you can go from B to B obviously these are tuned a standard E to E so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in and rather than kind of running through all the pickups and that I'm just going to plug it in and I'll play some chords for you we're going to run through a delay pedal and you're going to hear how it sounds
there you have it. There's um, some lovely ambient and uh, heavier stuff on the old Base 6. Um, as I say, I hope you agree. We try and demo the stuff that's kind of really, truly different, and now you get to see it from a guitar player's perspective. And as usual, if you've got any questions, you can always email me once again, panning along the bottom, I'm sure. And um, yeah, if you want us to demo anything else, just drop us a line.